everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Pooja, and if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for joining, and if you're coming back, thanks so much for coming back. Um, before we get started with this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to leave a comment below if you have something to say about what I had to say. Now, it is time for a January wrap-up. You might remember that I once said that I uh, wasn't gonna try to do that many wrap-ups and leave most of my wrap-up and TBR content on TikTok, which you should go check out if you have not yet. But I'm still gonna do that. But I thought like, I did a wrap-up last month on TikTok and it was like fine, but I only had a minute to really say anything about the books that I read. So I kind of felt like I wanted a forum where I could talk a little bit longer. Um, so I'm gonna do wrap-ups on here. I'm not gonna do TBRs still because I feel like I can't really stick to monthly TBRs and I kind of just read things that are interesting as they come along. So, um, but anyway, I thought it'd be fun to do wrap-ups at the end of every month. So here we are with our January wrap-up. Now, uh, January was a pretty good reading month for me. I actually had a few days where I didn't have to work as much as I normally do. Um, and so that helped me kind of set aside time to read more, which was great because I read some awesome books this month and I'm so excited to share them all with you. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first book that I have is A Luminous Republic by Andre Barba. Um, Andre Barba is a Spanish author, and basically the premise of this book takes place on in an unnamed South American country. There's a city called San Cristobal, and there's a man who basically has like a municipal job, who's the main character. Um, he has basically been sent there to do programs that will help the indigenous community become a part of the basically colonizer community. When he goes there, there's this band of 32 children that are kind of terrorizing the town and nobody knows who they are. They're just like this mysterious group of kids that presumably live in the jungle and keep coming into town and like stealing stuff um, and causing lots of issues. Um, so it's funny because in the foreword, it's described as like sort of Lord of the Flies, but if it was told from the observational lens of an adult, um, which I thought was a very apt description for what this book was. It was a really interesting, um, kind of almost mystical book, but at the same time, very contemporary style of writing. Um, I really enjoyed sort of the pieces where the author would kind of go into a situation that had happened related to these children in this town but then kind of extrapolate that to think about what does this say about humanity, which I think is in books like Lord of the Flies, we look for these overarching themes about humans and human nature. And I think he does a really good job of kind of thinking through those. So this was a very provocative novel. It made me think a lot um, and I really enjoyed it. I think it's won several awards, but it is a very literary novel, but at the same time, it's written in a way that's pretty easily accessible. And the translation that I have is by Lisa Doman. And I think it's important to always mention the translator because they have a pretty important job as well. The next book that I have is A Burning by Megha Majumdar. Um, so this is a book that takes place in India. It's sort of told from three different perspectives. One is this young girl who's grown up um, in a very poor family and she works at a clothing store selling clothes. Um, and she's actually um, from a Muslim family and she is accused of committing, um, you know, basically being part of a terrorist act that has happened in her city. Um, so it's told from her perspective and then it's also told from two other perspectives. One is her former gym teacher who is now taking part in local politics as well as the third perspective, which is a um, transgender woman that she is actually tutoring and helping learn how to read. Um, and this woman wants to become an actress, but obviously given the stigmas that surround the trans community is having a lot of difficulty in doing that. And it's a really interesting novel that talks about very prescient issues that are happening in India today with regards to relations between different religious groups and how certain Certain minorities are persecuted for their religious beliefs um, because this girl has basically not done anything. She has been falsely accused and has to go through the justice system with no one believing in what she has to say. And basically how these other two characters then um, sort of put their own needs above helping this girl who has really done nothing but good things for them in the past. Um, so it's a really interesting novel that I think explores human relationships on a very fundamental level, but also thinks about how society sometimes makes people who might be good people otherwise do really terrible things. So 
a very good book, made me cry several times. Okay, the next book that I have is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is a pretty popular book on booktube. I think a lot of people have read it. I was actually pretty excited to read it because I'm not the biggest fan of New York City, to be honest. Um, it's funny because I have a lot of friends who live there and I'm always talking about how, I don't know, something about it just never really sat well with me. Um, you know, obviously it's like a big city and I'm just not super comfortable in like giant cities, but to me, New York had gave, always gave me that feeling where I felt very invisible among the crowds of people and it didn't feel like people really smiled at each other and stuff. And, you know, I haven't spent that much time there. So honestly, I might have a, a misguided interpretation of, of New York City, but um, this novel was really interesting for me because it was one of the first fantasy novels that I'd read in a long time. Um, and at the same time, it helped me kind of appreciate parts of the city that I hadn't even known about before and sort of felt like um, I was gaining a newfound appreciation and understanding for New York City. I think this is a great book for anyone who lives there to read because I think it will fill you with a lot of nostalgia and love for your own city. But for me being someone who doesn't know New York City that well and didn't actually like it that much, it was also a great way to have this adventure fantasy novel, but also kind of make me feel like I would should maybe give New York City another chance and, and feel like that there's parts of it that I could definitely appreciate. So really enjoyed this one. I will say this wasn't, the plot didn't move as fast in this one, um, but I really enjoyed sort of the character building and the homage to New York um, as, as a concept almost rather than a city. Um, so the basic plot that takes place in this book is, the premise is that cities have like souls essentially and they are embodied by a certain person. Um, and so New York City has sort of a main New York City avatar, but then each borough has its own avatar. And I thought it was really interesting how the diversity of New York City was really worked into this book. Um, I read in the author's note at the very end that there were like 15 different sensitivity readers for each of the different um, characters that sort of play a role in this book, which I really appreciated. And I felt like, um, obviously, I'm not part of any of the communities that are represented in this book, so I can't say this with certainty, but I felt like the author N.K. Jemisin did a wonderful job presenting nuanced characters of different backgrounds and kind of doing so in a respectful way, um, but incorporating them really nicely into this overarching story of a city that's very chaotic and full of people from all different backgrounds and interests and just the, the diversity of New York City just kind of leaps out of the page, which was really exciting. Um, and I think this is the first book in a forthcoming trilogy or a series, so I'm excited to kind of see what comes next. So the next set of books I have is actually a series, and that is the Devabud trilogy, um, which is, of course, I have this in the wrong order, um, but starts off with the City of Brass, and then the Kingdom of Copper, and then the Empire of Gold. Now, this is a pretty hefty series. It's like, I think, each of the, you know, the first two books are like 500 pages and then the last book is like over 700 pages. Um, but I read this in like a weekend because it was so good. Um, it was one of the first fantasy series that I had read in a long time, but I absolutely loved it. Um, so the basic premise of this one, it starts off with our main character, Nahari, who is living in Egypt, in Cairo, in I think the early 1800s during Ottoman slash French occupation that was kind of going on. Um, and she's essentially a thief, um, but also kind of heals people in her community and is just kind of getting by. And her dream is to go to Istanbul and train with uh, physicians there to ultimately become a doctor herself. Um, and obviously she's trying to save up money and trying to get access to those kind of privileges, which were not easily attainable for a young orphaned girl living by herself. Um, but <laughs> one day she kind of gets drawn into this magical world where there's a city called Devabad and most and, and these magical creatures which um, humans call jinn are actually you know have like their own politics and everything and I just loved how this series built this beautiful um, fantasy world that really draws you in while at the same time being you know a story that was centered around people of color which was really amazing I mean when I read Harry Potter as a kid or Percy Jackson as a kid or all these other great fantasy series from my childhood, none of them really made me feel represented necessarily. 
But this series, while it's from a culture that's not even mine, but just the fact that it's taking um, people who are of Persian origin, of Somali origin, of um, Egyptian origin, and having those characters be the center of the story, and also not shying away from their religious beliefs. Like, um, the, the, one of the main characters, Ali, is, is a pretty observant Muslim, and that's a central part of the novel, and it's just part of his identity, and it's not something that the author shies away from, which I thought was fantastic. Um, thinking more about the sort of fantasy side of it, I really enjoyed the story. I felt like it kind of progressed the way it should have. Um, the plot was really exciting and never made me feel bored. One thing that I really enjoyed about how this trilogy is set up is there's also really nuanced um, scenes that have to do with how the politics kind of play into it. And one thing that I kind of took away from this that was really interesting is how people sort of change based on their dynamics when it comes to power and who's in power. And people who are fighting for justice, you know, in an oppressed situation, when those people become the powerful, how does their behavior change and how do they then end up justifying terrible things that they might do as well. So I thought that it was a really interesting discussion of, um, you know, people who have, all of the characters in this book pretty much, um, have noble causes and things that they believe in and they think they're doing the right thing, but how complicated that can get. And as power dynamics change, how people who think they're doing the right thing can actually end up doing pretty tyrannical things. Um, and so... All of the characters just have such a wonderful arc. Um, Dara, we love him, but also by the end, Ali, we love him more. And Nari is just a fantastic character um, throughout the book. And I just loved how things that she did at the very beginning of the first book kind of come back and it just wraps up really nicely at the very end. So love this series, would highly recommend for anyone who is looking for you know the new fantasy series that would be exciting and i think this is being turned to a netflix show soon which is very exciting um i hope they do it justice and don't screw up the casting and whitewash everybody because that sounds like something any film studio would do but i hope they do this well because i think this would be a fantastic show to watch on the screen um and if it's even half as good as the actual books were so love this the last book that I have to talk about from January is The Radium Girls. Now, I already made a video talking about this book, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but this was a nonfiction book, and it kind of talks about the story of these women who worked for radium companies, where basically they would paint on radium paint onto things like watches and military dials and stuff like that to make them glow in the dark. Obviously, radium is a radioactive element and will poison human bodies um, if used in excess or even in small amounts, honestly. And many of these women started to die or suffered major illnesses later. They had a huge legal battle and led to the, the establishment of things like OSHA in the United States today and basic workers' compensation laws and things like that. Um, so this was a fantastic book. I think the author did a great job of not only talking about the history and like what happened throughout the story, but really bringing in perspectives from the girls themselves and their families and kind of drawing in that human narrative element into the history. So it really makes you um, feel like you're rooting for these women and when tragic things start to happen to them, it's something you really feel quite viscerally. Um, so, you know, I think I mentioned this in my other video, but it was like the only nonfiction book in a long time that I can remember that has made me cry. And it's just a really well-written story that will make you um, really love the, the people that are in it um, and just feels terrible when bad things happen to them, but also is just a great historical read to understand um, the events that took place at this time. So that was all seven books that I read in January. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had some great reads this month and I hope to have similarly great reads in February. Let me know if you've read any of these books and enjoyed them as much as I did or if any of the things that I said today sparked your interest to read these books in the future. Um, that's all for today and that was my January wrap up. So as I mentioned before, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment below and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.